Continue reading the Holy Gospel according to St. John with the explanation by Blessed Philip. Chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. Glory to your Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judah, and there he fared with them a baptized. And John also was baptized in Anna near to Salem, because there was much water there, and they came, and they were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. Explanation Jesus remained in Jerusalem until the end of the Feast of Pascha. Then he went forth into the land of Judah and stayed for a while at the busy crossing over the Jordan River. When the Lord sought out much uh, frequented places, it was not out of vainglory or to flaunt his power, but because he sought to benefit as many as possible by his words and miracles. This is the same reason he went up to Jerusalem on the feast. When you hear that he baptized, do not think that he himself did the baptizing, but rather his disciples. The evangelist here credits the work of the disciples to their teacher. A little further on, on the evangelist is more direct. Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. You may ask, why did he not baptize? Here's the answer. John had previously said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was not yet given because it was not yet the proper time. If the Lord had baptized on occasion, he would have done so without the Holy Spirit. How then would his baptism differ from John's? And if he had impaired the Holy Spirit before it was time, this would have been an action unworthy of God. Who does everything in due season? When was the right time for him to give the Holy Spirit? After he sent it. It was first necess necessary that he pre present to the Father our human nature made sinless in himself. Only after God was reconciled to us could the Holy Spirit be sent as a rich and lavish gift. So it was that the disciples of Jesus were baptizing on this occasion, bringing more and more people to the teaching of the saviors. While they baptized, John also continued to baptize, accomplishing two things. First, he spoke about Christ to those who came to him, and he led them to the Savior. Second, he prevented his own disciples, already jealous of Christ, from being provoked to further envy. Although John constantly proclaimed Christ, yielding first place to him, he could not persuade his own disciples to leave him for Christ. Had he stopped baptizing, it would have further aroused their resentment of Christ. For the same reason, namely to avoid inflaming the envy of the Baptist disciples, Christ did not begin to preach until John was cast into prison. I also believe that God permitted John's beheading to take place quickly so that the devotion of the multitude to John would be transferred to Christ, and their minds would no longer be divided between the two. To sum up, Christ's disciples were baptized with a baptism no greater than John's. Both were incomplete, neither one impairing the Holy Spirit. But their purpose was the same, to lead to Christ those whom they baptized. Chapter 3, verses 25 through 27. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same Baptist, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it been given him from heaven. Explanation There arose a heated discussion about baptism when a certain Jew began to argue with John's disciples. This man favored the baptism performed by Christ's disciples, while John's disciples argued for that of their teacher. After the quarrel about purifying, meaning baptism, John's disciples approached their master and attempted to provoke him to indignation by saying, He that was with thee, formerly one of your disciples, 
has left you and is now baptizing on his own. Glory to your Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.